In this lesson, we are going to study extended set operations. When we have a large number of sets, rather than writing them using different letters of the alphabet, it can be easier to use subscripts such as this, a sub 1, a sub 2, 2 a sub 26. Why do we use this notation? First, it tells us how many sets we are working with using only a small number of symbols. So for example, here we know that we have 26 sets and we are only using the letter A instead of having 26 different symbols. Second, we can even talk about an infinite number of sets such as this one. Next, we can also form complicated union, intersection, and Cartesian products and this is what we are going to do in this section. First, let us talk about an index set. An index set is a set whose elements label the elements of another set. For example, if we have the sets a sub 1, a sub 2, and a sub 3 defined as follows, and we collect them in a set. So therefore, take a look at this set. This is a set containing three sets. What will be an index set? Our index set would be 1, 2, 3. We just get these subscripts over here and collect them inside a set. And that will be your index set. Next, for each natural number i, we let a sub i to be the set of all real numbers between negative 1 over i and 1 over i inclusive. That is, our a sub i is the close interval negative 1 over i, 1 over i. So, for example, our a sub 1 is negative 1, 1. Our a sub 2 is negative 1 half to 1 half. a sub 3 is negative 1 third to 1 third and so on. If we collect all these sets and put them inside a set, so this is a collection of sets, we have this one. What would be an index set for this set containing sets? Our index set would be the set of natural numbers. Our subscripts are just 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So take note that the index set sort of labels each set. It gives an identification tag for the set. Next, we will consider the case wherein our subscripts are not just confined with natural numbers. For any positive real number alpha, we define a sub alpha to be this one. This is our closed interval, negative 1 over alpha, 1 over alpha. So for example, we can now even talk about a sub 1 half. What will be this set? It is just negative 2, 2. We can even talk about a sub square root of 2. This is negative 1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2. But of course, we can also have a sub 3, which is negative 1 third to 1 third. Now, this a sub 3 here is the same a sub 3 that we have in example 2 because 3 is a natural number. Now, if we collect all of these sets, we will not be able to write it in this way because our index set is now the set of all positive real numbers. So we write this as follows. The set containing all sets a sub alpha where alpha is a positive real number. Our index set is the set of positive real numbers. Now that we discussed index sets, we can now talk about the finite union of sets. Let n be a natural number and suppose that we have n sets. The finite union of the sets a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub n, we also write it in this way, the union of a sub i's, i from 1 to n, is equal to this set. The set of all x, such that x is in a sub i for some, take note of this one, for some i from 1 to n. This is just a generalization of your definition of a union b. A union B is the set of all X such that 
x is in A or x is in B. So this is just saying that x is in either one of these. So when we have for some, it just means that you have to be in at least one of these A sub i's. We can also discuss about the infinite union of sets. So suppose we have a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and so on. Our index set here is a set of natural numbers. When we get the union of all of these sets, we also denote this as follows. The union of a sub i, i from 1 to infinity. So it contains all x such that x is in a sub i for some natural number i. For example, our a sub i is the half closed half open interval i, i plus 1. Let us determine the following sets. Let's get the union of a sub i, i from 1 to 5. Our a sub 1 is 1, 2, and then union it with 2, 3, 3, 4, union 4, 5, up to 5, 6. This is a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. What is this set equal to this is just the half closed, half open interval 1 up to 6. What about this one? The union of a sub i, i from 10 to 50. So here we will just start with a sub 10 and a sub 10 is 10, 11, union 11 up to 12 and so on until we reach... 50, 51. What will be the union of the sets? We are starting with 10. And then we will end up at 51. What about this one? The union of all a sub i's i from 1 to infinity. So that's 1, 2, 2, 3, and so on. And then it will continue indefinitely. What is the set? This is just the set. 1 up to infinity. Since we can talk about the finite union of sets, we can also discuss the finite intersection of sets. It will contain all elements such that it belongs in each of these A sub i's, right? So take note the difference between intersection. So here, your x must belong to each of the A sub i's here. Whereas for the union, x should belong to a sub i for some. So they have different quantifiers. Similarly, we can define the infinite intersection of sets. So here, this intersection will contain all elements such that x is in a sub i for each natural number i. Suppose that we have the sets b sub 1 defined as follows, 1, negative 1. So this is just a set containing two elements. In other words, our b sub n is the set containing n negative n where n is a natural number here. Let us find the following. What would be the union of b sub i, i from 1 to infinity? What will this be? We have the positive integers and the negative integers. We just do not have 0. So therefore, this is just the set of integers take away 0. What will be the intersection of all these b sub i's? There is no element which is common to each of the b sub i's, correct? So this is the empty set. Here's another example. Suppose that our a sub i is the half-closed, half-open interval 0 up to 1 over i. Our index set is the set of natural numbers. What would be the intersection of a sub 1 up to a sub 5? So this is 0, 1, intersection 0, 1 half, and so on, until 0 up to 1 fifth. This set is just a sub 5, 0, 1 fifth. So take note here that for our a sub i, the next set... Let's me, let me call it a k plus 1. It will always be contained inside the bigger set a sub k. So therefore, what will be their intersection? This one. 
a sub i i from 10 to 50. All we have to do is to just get the smallest set and the smallest set would be the one with the highest index. So in that case, that would be a sub 50. So that's 0, 1 over 50. You can also view it as 0, 1 over 10 intersection. 0, 1 over 11 intersection up to 0, 1 over 50. And their intersection would be this one. What about this one? The intersection of all the A sub I's. What do you think is the answer? The only common element would be the set containing 0. Now, suppose that our index set is not just confined to the set of natural numbers. So that's why I have I here is just any set. And let A sub I be a set for each I. We can now define the union of A sub I. We use this notation. Union of A sub I, I element of capital I. That's the set of all element X such that X is in one of the sets here. Look at that. For some and then we have for each. When we have intersection, we have for each. For union, we have for some. For example, for each natural number i, we let a sub i to be equal to the set containing i, i plus 1, and 2i. Let us show that the union of a sub i, i element of natural numbers, is simply the set of natural numbers. Take note that this notation is just the same as a sub i, i from 1 to infinity. For our proof, we need to show equality of two sets. So therefore, we have to show two subset relationships. Which one is the more obvious subset relationship? It will be this one. The union of A sub I will be a subset of natural numbers because the elements of A sub I are natural numbers. So therefore, it suffices to show that the set of natural numbers is a subset of this set. So we want to show this relationship. How do we prove this? We take an arbitrary natural number. So let's call that n. Let n be a natural number. And how do we show that something is in the union? So take note that x will be an element of the union if and only if x is in a sub i for some natural number i. If you want to show that something belongs in the union, you have to get a particular subscript, right? So this is an existential proof. What would be that subscript? that we need so that n will be an element of a sub that subscript. Clearly, it will be n. So since n is an element of n, n plus 1 to n, and this is your a sub n, we were able to find a set containing our n. So we have that N is an element of the union. So that takes care of the other subset relationship. So therefore, the union of A sub I, I natural numbers would be the set of natural numbers. Next, let us go back again to our set a sub alpha the close interval from negative 1 over alpha to 1 over alpha let us find the following the union of a sub alpha alpha running over all positive real numbers what do you think is this let us imagine what is going on here our a sub 1 is this set suppose we have a sub 500. So it will be the close interval from negative 500 to 500. So it will cover everything here and so on. So what happens as your alpha gets bigger and bigger, you will be able to cover the entire set of real numbers. 
What about the intersection? What do you think is the intersection of all these A sub alphas? This will be the set containing 0. Now let us prove this. It's so just like in our previous example, which one is the obvious subset relationship? It will be this direction, correct? So since A sub alpha is a subset of the set of all real numbers for each positive real number alpha, the union will be a subset of the set of real numbers. For the other direction, we get an arbitrary real number. We have to show that R is contained inside at least one set here. And what would be that set? Let's have some scratch work first. Take note, this is a real number. Let's say 1 half. It is an element of A sub 1 half, right? So that means... If R is positive, in general, we can take R to be an element of A sub R. But what if R is negative? Take note that our subscripts are just positive. So suppose we have negative 1 half. This will still be an element of A sub 1 half because A sub 1 half is from negative 1 half to 1 half. So therefore, in general, if R is negative... R would be an element of A sub negative R. But of course, we can also have 0. But 0 will always be an element of every A sub alpha. So in particular, 0 is an element of A sub 1. How do we now generalize this? We now consider the case when R is non-zero and when r is equal to zero. If r is equal to zero, then definitely r is an element at least of a sub 1. It's enough. If r is not equal to zero, what would be the set containing r? r would be an element of a sub, the absolute value of r, because our subscript has to be positive. So we have just shown that regardless of the value of R, your R will always be contained inside a particular set. So therefore, R is an element of the union. That proves the equality of these two sets. Next, let us show that the intersection of all these sets is equal to the set containing 0. Which one is the more obvious subset relationship? This direction or this direction? It's this direction. So we say since 0 is an element of A alpha, for each positive real number alpha, we now have that the set containing 0 is a subset of the intersection because that is the definition of an element being in the intersection. It has to be an element of all the sets. That's why we have for each alpha greater than zero. We now show that the intersection will be a subset of the set containing zero. So hence, we start with an arbitrary element here. So we will show that for x to be an element of this set containing 0, it only means that x is equal to 0. Take note that you can guide your reader that this is what you want to do, all right? But you are not supposing that x is equal to 0. What does it mean for x to be an element of the intersection? It means that x is an element of a sub alpha for each positive real number alpha. So that means x is between negative 1 over alpha, 1 over alpha for each positive real number alpha. And what can we do? We can take the limit as alpha approaches infinity. This will approach 0 and this will approach 0. We now have that x is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 0. And so x is equal to 0. Just to end this 
lecture, I just want you to remember that the equivalent definitions of X being an element of the union. So here, my index set is just I. This would mean that X is an element of A alpha for some alpha in I. And for you to be an element of the intersection, it means that you have to be in each of the A sub alphas for each alpha element of I. So always remember this.